The following program is supported by High Country Bank, which has been serving Colorado since 1886. While High Country Bank remains a true community bank, they offer many of the same services as the big banks. They specialize in mortgage, construction, and business lending, and strive to provide an exceptional customer experience with every interaction. To learn more, please visit www.highcountrybank.net. Hi, I'm Realtor Sarah Morrow with Cell State Peak Realty. Welcome to episode four of Property Time. Today we're chatting about commercial lending and I'm thrilled to welcome Drew Ballingham, commercial lender with High Country Bank here in Longmont. Drew is on his 20th year of service in lending. He's truly an expert and he's about to share some golden nuggets about how it's not so scary to take out a loan as a small business owner, whether you own property or not. Drew is a local family man who has worked with hundreds of entrepreneurs. He comes from a family of entrepreneurs and he's passionate about building stable financial futures alongside his clients and his customers. As a long gamer myself, who's an entrepreneur, I cannot wait to hear his wisdom, and I hope you'll join me whether you own a business, property, or not. Hi, Drew. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for having me. You're so welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. So uh, let's dive right into this. So. Now that we're somewhat post-pandemic, um, I know that Longmont is rife with small business owners, and all of yes. us are clamoring for a little support, maybe, to make up for lost time the last couple of years. And um, I don't know, you're the expert. What does a commercial borrower or a small business owner need to do to either qualify for maybe a mortgage or a purchase, or even just to get money? Because let's be honest, some business owners need money more than they need real estate right now. So tell us about what you're seeing and who you're helping. They do. The One of the hard parts that a lot of business owners are coming in contact with is like, especially with the pandemic, maybe their their banker is not there anymore. Maybe, you know, they, their relationship with the bank is, is now gone, you know? Um, and so they're, they're looking to see who's out there like what where they can go and so um it's nice to we've got a location here in longmont it's nice to be in longmont um to have that you know local feel where people can go and and mingle um and so you know a lot of times it's just word of mouth um is a good a, a good start you know if they know other business owners in the area or uh work with other people they you know they can ask, you know, who, who do you bank with and stuff like that. And that's, that's a good start. So. So what are you seeing? Do small business owners, do they already have existing relationships with you? Do they just walk through the doors? Are they applying for loans? Tell us about commercial lending just in general. In general. Okay. Um, well, there's, there's lots of different uh, aspects to it. So a lot of what we're seeing uh, at High Country Bank, because we're such a small community bank. So and we're new to the market, so um, we're trying to figure out like what what our niche is, you know, like what businesses are here, like what, you know, what where where can we entrench ourselves in the community? And and initially, since we opened in uh, last November, like right in the smack dab in the middle of the pandemic, yeah, yikes, uh, businesses were closed, and so I was you know walking up and down Main Street, and it was kind of like. Uh, it wasn't de depressing, I don't know if it is, is the right word, but it was kind of like, it was sad to see mm. that there were businesses that weren't around anymore. Um, and so, uh, but yeah, we're on, you know, there's, they can go on online to look for a bank if they've got a specific um, uh, request that they know of, if it's an equipment loan, if it's a line of credit or whatever it is, line of credit lender or whatever, they can go online and search for things like that. Um, we don't have a lot of, uh, walking through the door business anymore. And that's true with anything, any bank. Sure. Um, and so a lot of it, yeah, it's just, is word of mouth as we've, um, you know, done community events, gotten involved in the, in the community. People recognize us. They see us wearing the shirt. They ask questions. And um, from there, it just kind of snowballs. And, and um, you know, just to, 
to start the relationship and start the discussion, a lot of times it's either via email, someone introduced us via email or uh, a phone call or at an event and a card has been swapped and then somebody calls in and, and we start the discussion at that point. So you mentioned, I really love your entrepreneurial and your go-getter, like you literally hit the pavement. And I just so love that. Us realtors know what that's like. Yeah. Um, so you were, you were out looking for people to help and to serve. And it sounds like there are some businesses that obviously survived, such as you guys. Tell me about one of your partnerships here in Longmont that's been rewarding that, you could, that you've been able to support and see them through the pandemic and maybe even help them own property or expand or rent or pay their rent or... Yeah, I mean, I've, I've uh, had the opportunity to, to deal with a lot of uh, different industries since I've been here and different aspects of uh, businesses. You know, one in particular is a Main Street business here that um, had experience in uh, the dog grooming industry. Um, and so elsewhere, but had come here and they were working, you know, with, with a dog groomer and getting paid contract, a contract with that groomer. And um, that groomer then set, became, is, is 70, I think. And so she didn't want to be involved in the business anymore. And so, um, she came to them knowing that they had a bunch of experience and said, Hey, you know, do you guys want to purchase my business? And, uh, a dog grooming business is an interesting business because there's not much, I mean, there's some inventory. All it is is basically the uh, leased space, you know, with some like a really particular type of space. <laughs> yeah, and so there's not much, but in way by the way of like collateral, you know, for us to lend against, and especially if they're leasing the space, we can't use that as collateral because they don't own it. Sure. Um, but we were able to provide them with um, funding to purchase the business, and and we looked at okay, th this business generates X amount of money there's you know they, there's a client base here already um and that helps them qualify it does help them qualify uh also you know looking at at their historical you know what they've been able to generate just on their own through their own you know uh contract with other with their other dog grooming place you know so um they've got to have some kind of income that's generated too it can't be all pro forma and projections sure. um but that was nice. It, it was a it was a small loan, but it, for them it was huge because right because they were startup, them. they were pandemic exactly they were renting yeah and uh, and it was a business that was mature. It already had a customer base, and so they were just walking into and then with their expertise, you know, they've been able to just mm. grow it exponentially from there. So that was kind of neat. That must be very um, rewarding. It is to help the, the underdogs to pun. Hey, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thank you for that. Well, we mentioned qualification, and I want to also touch on that. Were you done? Did I interrupt you? No, I'm done. There's there's many examples like I like that. Yeah, um, just another one, just to kind of throw it out there. Like e-commerce is a big thing now. Yeah. And so uh, we actually have have a client now who's um, he started out in his garage selling uh, barbecue equipment, accessories, and stuff like that. Oh, okay. And uh, not you the know, food. Not the food, but just you know everything around it. But um, like aprons and LED lights that hang on the, the barbecue unit and stuff like that. Fun. Um, but he was, you know, he had a little bit of product and it was, it would be shipped to his house. And so he was just out of his garage and from his garage, he was shipping it. Mm. Well, the pandemic hit and he had a new product that he wanted, wanted to launch. And, um, so he got on Facebook and he did some, some other, uh, advertising and marketing and, uh, hadn't really delved into that side of the business to date and uh it just went like wildfire mm. and it went from you know making a couple hundred thousand dollars in revenue a year to now he's like almost up to two million and, You're kidding me. and that was pandemic fueled because everyone's online wow. and everyone's barbecuing everyone's barbecuing and wow. so his products just and so he went from a two hundred thousand dollar a year business to almost two million and it's just going to grow and grow and grow and so it was nice for us to get in on the ground level with him. Right. And, you know, the reason he came to us is because he needed funding. Like he needed that boost. He didn't have cash to purchase all this stuff and sure. get it made for eventual sale. And so um, 
we were able to help him with that, uh, get him a line of credit. It's it's the line of credit has since increased as revenues sure. increased and, sure. and things like that. But um, yeah, it's cool to see. That, I mean, there's so many different businesses in this area. Mm. Uh, we we all we hear about all the big, you know, ball aerospace and all the the big companies the and the publicly and the traded yeah. companies that are here, which sure. is awesome. Right. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of smaller um, businesses that are scaling up or, mm -hmm. or just starting. Or there's there's a ton, so it's nice. Well, despite this being a real estate show, I do appreciate you reminding me that Main Street is, and you know, the American dream is not just about our actual Main Street strip here. There's a lot of e-commerce. There's a lot of, like, I'm a realtor. I don't physically have a space on Main Street. You know, I've got, I've got an office in Kaufman, but it's like. A lot of us are just doing this online. We're doing right. this from our bootstraps, and it sounds like you have some wins that must feel very good yeah. um, to partner with. So um, mm -hmm. I wanted to also get into, you mentioned qualification, and you mentioned business credit. It feels like a lot of us, particularly in this real estate space industry that we're in, you know, we know a lot about the 30-year fixed mortgage. We know about the amortized qualifying. I have to show you my tax returns. I have to show you my pay stubs. I, I know what roughly I can qualify for. Then I go shopping for a house, and then I go shopping for a loan product. You're on the commercial side, which intimidates a lot of people. Even yeah. if I do <laughs> have my own mortgage and I do have a small business, I might be really intimidated about getting a commercial loan, you know, small or large-scale business. So can you help me figure out, do I run from it? Do I wait? Do I just dive in because it's really not that scary? I mean, it's not scary, and I hope that when people talk to me, their initial thought, you know, their initial, uh, you know, introduction with me, I, I try and say it's not scary. This isn't a, a scary thing, because it's not. I mean, it's, um, but I do get a lot of feedback that that's why, you know, people waited till the last minute, till they needed funding in, in a week or two, because mm. they were just so... Uh, scared yeah, to even I approach. The, I noticed the fear leading to procrastination myself. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, there are some similarities. So um, mortgage lending, there's typically like an application process and you have, you know, you have to provide tax returns and income statements and um, financial statements and, and so on and so forth. Similar with commercial lending, uh, no matter what it is, uh, you've got, you know, whether it's a line of credit, whether it's an equipment term loan, whether it's a commercial real estate deal, whether it's $10,000 that you need or whether it's $5 million that you need, the packet is pretty similar. It's the same. Um, but uh, there are there are a, a lot of different products. So mortgage lending, yeah, you've got your 30-year fixed, you've got jumbo, you've got, you know, it's, it's pretty standard. A lot of people understand like what those loans are all about. Um, but on the commercial side, it, it, there's, you know, for a commercial real estate loan, you're typically looking at like a 25 year amortization period where, uh, where, and your, your loan is only fixed for five or 10 years of that 25 years. And so there's going to be a time where there's going to be a big balloon payment, right? Um, which is different from mortgage where it's, it's different from 30 the year fixed sure, rates. No yeah. So there's a lot of, um, because there's, there's a lot of risk with lending, you know, at, 4% rates if in right. 25 years, it's going to be up to 10 or 15% or whatever it is, you know? Um, so there's just, and, and so that's why, uh, and I don't want to jump, jump the gun because I know we, excuse me, we talked about this earlier, but uh, uh, that's why it's good to have, to know somebody or have somebody to talk to, especially on the commercial side, because uh, you've got, there's so many different options and, and it's, it's such a, um, there's a wide array of doing, you could give two or three products to somebody when they only really need like this line of credit right. or something like that. Right, so. right. It's very tailored. Yeah. yeah. I'll get to that in a second. Can you say more about, um, you mentioned the qualification, the terms, you mentioned the interest rate. You know, a lot of us that own homes, we refi within a couple of years to improve the rate. That's very normal. We don't see, you know, things spike or change or the risk. Like, is that does that kind of operate the same way with this twenty-five but five-year balloon? It does. Typically, there's on the commercial side, there's a prepayment penalty. Okay. Um, so within like the uh, within that five years or ten years, if you go to refinance elsewhere, um, there's a, a penalty for doing so, whether sure. it's a percentage of the loan amount or, or some other uh, formula. But the interest uh, rates and the terms are pretty similar. Right, four-ish percent right now. 
depending yeah, on a yeah. bunch of different factors, I'm sure. Right, yeah. Um, typically, yeah, dollar amount is, is a factor. You know, if you're doing a $3 million uh, commercial deal, you're, you're probably getting um, one of the best, better rates, uh, just because to stay competitive. Um, but yeah, it's pretty similar. We're generally, commercial real estate loans are, are generally a little bit higher uh, than what, you, what you'd find on the that mortgage side. Yeah. Cool. And people do the 20, you said 25 year is kind of what they naturally automatically default get. Do they have a that's, choice about that? I mean, that's like the conventional, like 25 year AM, uh, five year fixed, and then it reprices after five. But there's also, I mean, you can do 15 year fixed rates, oh, okay. um, 10 year fully amortizing fixed rates. Obviously your payments are a little bit higher monthly. Sure. So it doesn't make sense to a lot of, for a lot of commercial real estate, uh, owners and investors because they're they want their rents to be able to pay for the loan and so if, of course you know um for the numbers to make sense yeah can you share a little bit more about like details on your specific products and how they are competitive to other banks and other lenders i know you guys did a lot with ppp during the the pandemic which i'm sure was part of your hitting the pavement hustle yeah um and then you know i'm sure you guys work with chaffa so we do. could you talk a little bit about how you subsidize and you're the conventional side who subsidizes that and allows for that or yeah so um we do so instead of going sba on a lot of like so we get a lot we feel a lot of inquiries because we are new to the to the area and we're a smaller community bank so we get a lot of small business type sure. inquiries um and where other banks may say okay this is an sba product you need to go i see we need to partner with an SBA. Um, they sort of qualify that and then bring in SBA for yeah, you. Exactly. Uh, we use CHAFA, the Colorado Housing and Finance Authority. Mm -hmm. um, and so what that does. All those guys. Yeah. There is, so it's, it's basically the same kind of thing as SBA. It's like an insurance type uh, product, but, um, you know, just to like mitigate risk, essentially. Um, but so like, for example, if you've got a $100,000 line of credit and you only have collateral of 110,000. So there's, you know, for lines of credit on like business assets, typically we're lending like 65 to 75% loan to value. So, you know, for a $100,000 line of credit, you, you need to show $150,000 in collateral. So there's sometimes a shortfall there. Gotcha. You mean um, if I require 100 for my project, yeah. I can only show that I'm earning up to X dollar amount. Right. That's when Chaffa can fill in the bridge. So there's a, there's a gap okay. there, yeah. So Chaffa essentially comes in and for they, they charge a 1% origination fee. Sure. Um, and that money goes into a pooled account of money that the bank has. Got it. Um, and the, the origination fee money goes into there, and um, and that essentially is uh, the 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 buffer. The buffer, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The gap filler. Yeah. yeah, it's not so different from like a down payment assistance program in the residential exactly. side. Yeah. But you're saying I don't apply for that. You apply for that on my behalf as a business. Exactly. Owner. Yeah. You it's guys just partner. A, yeah, and then compared to SBA, where SBA lending is very. Um, arduous it's mm. a, it's a it's a long process it yeah, can take to up wait. to like two months right. um a little more it's a little tape. more expensive mm. uh you know higher um, origination fees sure. um this is a two-page document that go, goes with our credit presentation and it's technically more local because it's colorado only is that correct it is or? so the the bank has to have a relationship with chaffa right and you guys uh, have that be, and we do yeah Cool. So yeah. you've got, but PPP, Chaffa, SBA, these are government subsidized programs, mm -hmm. whereas you bring on the conventional bank side, but the two together lower the risk for, lower the risks to you from me. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're like a newer business that doesn't have a track record of success, right. Right. Um, then that's when we would use Chaffa. If you're, you know, an existing business, like I'm working with a company now that's 22 years in business, uh, we're not going to. Don't need Chaffa. We don't need it. Yeah. Right. So. Cool. Um, I guess my last question is, yeah, you touched on it is, you know, you can watch TV and you can call on 1-800 number and you can see things like get pre-approved today, get funded, get your business lines of credit. Like, it seems like it's easy, but you touched on this. In my experience with these cut rate realtors and just sort of like going down the wrong path myself and seeing clients do it, 
tell me the real, the real reasons why you need a human, why you need a branch, why it helps that you're local, why it helps that you're a, a local small business that's new yourself. Right. Um, you know, can you give me some, some sense of like, what if I'm saving more money by calling the 1-800 number and I'm getting a better rate? Like, isn't that a better deal? Yeah, and there are aspects. I mean, we obviously a lot of banks share the same sentiment that we're like relationship driven, and so yeah, if someone's going out and looking for the best rate, you know, and cheapest money shopping possible. around, then so be it. Yeah, go right. go find. I don't believe what I said, by the way. <laughs> go go find, go find that, and that's fine. You know, maybe at least I've had this conversation with you. There's you know, we've built some kind of rapport. You know, if that doesn't work out, come back to us and we'll figure something out. Um, but what was your question? I'm sorry. Why use a human? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so a lot of a lot of uh, customers that we've received so far, they've gone to a bank, and just because of the industry they're in, maybe it's a restaurant mm -hmm. uh, where you know for the past year and a half, if a, if you go to a bank and say I'm a restaurant and I need a loan, they're just like, no, like I don't Especially know if you're going to survive. COVID, yeah. Yeah. And so they get kicked out. And so it's like, okay, mm. but okay, you want to open a restaurant. Um, do you have other assets? You know, do you have a home that you own that you now have a lot of equity in because mm. the market is hot? Uh, we can, you know, put a second deed of trust behind your first mortgage Just if there's enough takes. equity. Yeah, make it work. And so if you don't have that relationship with the banker or you know, if you don't have somebody to talk to um, and you go to a bank, it, it can be frustrating because oh, they're yeah. just the like... Oh, yeah, the creativity is out the window. Yeah. And they they're don't. like, oh, yeah. thanks. And so, and then also for, you know, customers like the e-commerce person that's growing, you know, we gave him a small line of credit, but now right. three, four months later, he needs, he needs that doubled, you know? Sure, so, needs change. Yeah. And... But and so he can he changes. can he can quickly facilitate getting me information. I already know his, his you know what's happening in his, his business. Yeah. yeah, and so it's really helpful to have that human touch. Drew, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate That's it. That's the proper tea. <laughs>